Kimmy the Gadget Goddess. Today I have for you every foldable that I purchased this year. Now, there's a caveat to that because technically the Oppo Find N was purchased last year, but it was like this time last year, just like the Oppo Find N2 is being purchased. So I couldn't review it with my last year phones or put it in the running for my phone of the year last year. But this year, I'm gonna include it in my foldable of the year. I'm not gonna say phone of the year because I am Team Pixel and I do receive the Pixel devices. I have the 6A and the 7 Pro. This is just about foldables because foldables seem to be their own kind of category. Let's get into this and let's see what I've kind of come up with. First, let me go ahead and ruin this for you and not drag this out. I am not picking one of these phones as my favorite phone. I am sorry, I just can't do it. Each one of these devices has a particular reason why I didn't sell it. My MO is always to sell the phone to get the next phone. I am not a collector of phones. So for me to be sitting with four phones at the end of the year is crazy. So there had to be some reason I kept each one of these phones. So let's get into why I kept each phone. And towards the end, I'll tell you which phones I'm getting ready to get rid of. First, we're gonna talk about the Opal Find In. If you haven't caught up on my latest on the Oppo Find N, my last video about a phone was about this device because of all the updates it got towards the end of the year. My full review did not cover the updates it got because it got them pretty much in December or November. This phone is functioning as if it was a global device at this point. Wi-Fi calling, 5G, things of that nature. So it's working as it should. The reason I kept this phone around even when I didn't have those features was due to the form factor. This foldable has the best form factor to date. And I am glad they kept it with the Oppo Find N2. And that's why I ordered the Oppo Find N2. This form factor gives you a bigger screen when you need it, compact small screen when you don't, and the width of a regular phone all the time. I find it very easy to type away on this keyboard. I find it easier just to use this phone, you know, whether I be in one hand or whether I be, you know, another hand or from in both. It's just a very comfortable device to use. The Oppo Find N has wireless charging. It also has this unique ability to be able to stand on its own no matter what position I put it in, which has always been a plus for me because I'm always, you know, standing my phone up in one direction or the other. And it's just wonderful to be able to just stand your phone up without having to open it slightly or put it in a flex mode. A lot of people rant and rave about flex mode and I'm not just crazy about flex mode at all. That's why I kept this phone. I give it best folding form factor foldable 2020. Up next, we have the Vivo X Fold. I know a lot of people that love this device. I still love this device. It is the heaviest device in my arsenal and probably why I am not carrying this device currently. It's not a terrible phone. It uses wireless charging. It has a form factor of a regular phone width-wise. It came with fast charger. I purchased this kickstand case. It did not come with that. This Vivo case wasn't too expensive. Vivo sold a factory case with this phone as well, which I picked up. And this was just an awesome phone to carry around. I know a couple people that this was their first import. They fell in love with it and they kept it. This phone also gets 5G. The switch on this phone was my absolute favorite. It gives you those iPhone kind of vibes. You can turn it off and on for silent mode without having to go into settings or use your volume rocker. That was probably my favorite feature on this phone, although it'd be, you know, very random and small. Wireless charging is a plus for those who use it. I'm not big on wireless charging, but you know, that was two things that I really liked about this phone and the camera was phenomenal on this phone as well. If you're still considering the Vivo X Fold, they came out with another model. I think it was like a Vivo X Fold Plus or Pro or something. But if you're interested in this phone, they did upgrade it and it comes in other colors now. That was why I kept the Vivo. Up next, we have the Xiaomi Mi Fold 2. This phone was phenomenal as well. This, I speak so highly of these devices because each iteration of these phones has been a step up. They didn't really take any lateral moves. I had the Xiaomi Mi Mix Fold and let me tell you, it had that similar form factor to the Samsung and it was thinner across the front. I'm glad they gave it a big screen across the front and you know, kept the inside nice and big like we like it. 
Camera's phenomenal as always. Very, very light phone for how big it is. The design of the phone is beautiful and glorious and they gave you a kickstand case with this device and a quick charger like everything else I've had so far. I kept this phone around because big form factor wise, this has been my favorite foldable of the year, big one. I feel like in my world where I carry two phones and I have for over a decade now, I need a smaller phone and I need a bigger phone. I don't need two big phones and I don't need two small phones. But we'll get into that a little bit later. Xiaomi did not have a slider on this phone. They did have in the settings where you can set it for 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, or eight hours to silence the phone. That works well if you're at work, want to silence it for those eight hours, and you're using a smartwatch like I was using it with this phone. Reason I kept this phone, best big fold form factor of 2022. Last but not least, but my last purchase of 2022 that is actually here. We're not counting the Oppo Find N2. It's not here. Probably won't be here to close to the first year. Is the Motorola Razr 2022. This phone is an awesome phone. The compactness, actually being able to do things on the front screen, take pictures. Hey, how are y'all doing? I've also found that I don't use the selfie camera. I'm doing everything from this camera because it's the best camera on the phone. This form factor and the Oppo form factor I've been using over the past couple weeks just to have two smaller phones and to test out two smaller devices at the same time. It's hard for me to put the Oppo and the Motorola in the same category even though they're both smaller. When you open the Motorola it is just not as big as the other phone. This is my fastest 5G device out of all of my imports. This one functions as a global unit 10 times over. My speeds are ridiculously fast. The phone is super responsive and I've been able to pretty much get rid of all the bloatware that I wanted to get rid of on this phone. Search bar comes down. If I pull down the search and type in the search, I see some Chinese lettering. But outside of that, this is a global device. The global device is available for this phone for sale on Amazon. I can link you to that if you're just still not so great about importing a Chinese device. I will tell you that it's about two or three hundred dollars more than getting a Chinese variant right now because the price has dropped on these. This phone came with a case that I never used. I've gotten a number of cases. Shout out to Naked Cell Phone Case that sent me a barrage of cases. I picked up a carbon fiber case. I had the Aurora cases and I had some pretty feminine, girly, cutesy cases. And if you have not checked out those videos, I will plug my Motorola Razor section right here so you can dig into those if you're interested. Form factor, the need for speed, this little powerhouse ready for which I tried out which is similar to Dex on Samsung and that's why I kept the Motorola Razr. So some of you might be scratching your head and saying where are the Samsung devices? I had the Fold 3 and the Flip 3. Samsung has not really stepped their game up enough with the Fold 4 and the Flip 4. So I decided not to get those this year. I'd rather invest in devices that I actually saw making changes and innovating rather than buying what is so similar to the previous device of what I had last year. So that's why you don't see a Samsung Fold 4 or a Samsung Flip 4 on this table. I didn't grab the Honors because at the time the Honors weren't able to get Google Play services even though they aren't affiliated with Huawei anymore. And it's just so easy just to download Google Play services to these phones then have to work five or six hours than to get it on phones like the Huawei or the Honor. So that's why you don't see an Honor here and that's why you don't see any Huawei's here. You know how much I love Huawei's. Furthermore, I don't know if my pockets could have handled it being I didn't sell anything. Now that we're towards the end of the video, I'm going to share with you which two devices I'm about to unload. And it probably shouldn't be too hard for you to understand which ones I'm going to unload. Those phones would be the Oppo Find N and the Vivo X Fold. Not only are those my oldest two devices, but I am replacing the Oppo. Now when the Oppo Find N2 comes in, I will be rocking the Find N1 and the Find N2 just to get a feel for is the internet faster? Is it the same device? How similar are they? Because I don't think I'll mind that at all because they're really great form factors on phones. Before I unload the Oppo Find N, I will be doing coverage on it and the Find N2. 
Don't get too upset. The reason I'm getting rid of the Vivo X Fold, out with the old and in with new, and I gotta make room for whatever foldable is gonna make an appearance on this channel after the Oppo Find N2. Nothing personal against the phone, it's just time for it to go. I would like to thank you for checking out my foldable of the year video for 2022. As you can see, I liked some phones for some reason. Some phones can stand on their own. Some phones have wireless charging. Some phones don't have wireless charging. But I have love for every foldable that I purchased this year for one reason or another. And that was the reason why it stayed in my lineup and didn't get sold immediately. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like. If you've enjoyed multiple videos on this channel, you might want to subscribe. Subscriptions are free. Memberships cost and memberships have privileges. Subscriptions, especially with the notification bell, will get you back to this channel for future foldable videos. Memberships. Look at your members only streams and all kinds of other fun stuff. Click on the join button and see what those perks have to offer. I would like to thank you for your time because time is money and I'd like to wish you all a happy new year. Hi.